Good evening, Mr. Roman and Roy back again. I'm going to try and load up some photographs tonight to show you what it's all about. Some of them are a bit dodgy, but I do the best I can. So the first one is of my grandfather, Clarence Ware, uh, when he bought the place down at uh, Otherbank. That's the place he bought there. And that's his 30 in the White Bedford. Now, I got a better picture of that, but that's what he is at the moment. Because I'm still having trouble uploading videos. I've got to do this manually. So that first one was of my grandfather. This next one, again, is of my grandfather. This is just after he'd come out of the army. That's Clarence Ware Sr. So that's another one of E. Um, the next one is of, uh, I think that's of his, um, that's of his uh, dad and his mum uh, on the fair. If you can see, that's the, that's the wagons there, then the showman's wagons. So you can see that there. They was from the fair and that's the, what the wagons they travelled with. So that was, uh, if you like, then my great great granddad called Tom Ware. Uh, the next, the next one now um, is of my great great grand Ware and my great aunt Betsy. Um, it was all fine rackleys. I can tell you that much. Um, it was all show people though. So that's they. I'm talking about people that I never ever met or knew. Uh, I knew this this pair this pair here. I told you a story about these one these next ones. It's great. Uh, well, great. That's Uncle Alf. And Aunt Lily. Now Uncle Alf used to sell the swag on the fairground. And Aunt Lily used to tell do a bit of duckering. So that's they two. They was uh, smart people as well. Um, the next one is their wedding. That's what they was like at their wedding. So Aunt, Aunt Lloydy was my granddad's sister. This is my great great grand wire now. She was a show lady. Travel with the fair. And uh, the next one now is uh, that's, uh, that's Uncle Tom, my grandfather's brother, with his mother. That's uh, my grandfather's mother there, my great grandmother. That's another one. Uh, this one here now is another one of me, my grandfather's uh, sister. You can see the showman's wagon in the background again. All these people travel with the fair. Now you remember me telling you a story. Now this is me. Uh, this is me uncle Tom, my grandfather's brother, with his wife Nancy, the little tiny Ratley. He's sitting down and she's standing up. Don't forget. So you can see how tiny she was. That's she. This next one is what I told you about earlier on, uh, early on in my life. That's uh, my grandfather there with Aunt Laura. Uncle Sam is to his right. My mum and dad's back on the left-hand side. And Aunt Laura's to the left of my grandfather there. That's they. So we move on now. Um, I told you about my Uncle Joey. There he is there. That's my mum's brother. And that's, he's holding me mum and my dad's business partner up at the time 
Oh, Mickey Burris, I told you about E. And asked me dad there with one of his old four Thames. He's uh, making out to have a panty. That's he there. Some more pictures here of my uncle Joey. Mickey Burris there, my dad's partner. There's again Uncle Joey with Mickey Burroughs in front of an old J-type. Bedford, this is all took at Ellerbank, where I was born. And you remember me telling you about the old Shandy that I uh, drove through with my dad's tractor? There's Uncle Joey standing in front. And you also remember me telling you about the corral where the Samson and Harry put me on the horse. And there's the corral to the right of that. There's me ma'am with my dad's partner, Mickey Burris. Another one of Uncle Joey, my dad and Mickey. Now here's one now of me with Uncle Tommy Matthews. And uh, this particular day, he didn't have a lot of takers to ride this mule. Now this mule was crazy. So he said to me, uh, Jump on much? I said, no, I ain't jumping on with Tom. I said, you'll, you'll jab him as soon as I get on. He said, I won't jab him at all. Anyway, Uncle Tommy used to have a, a little bit of a a knobby stick in his pocket. As soon as I jumped on, he jabbed me. He went straight up in the air. And there's me hanging on for dear life. But uh, there's me cousin Fred there. He's in the background watching on. Mm, that's uh, that's the Bronco riding days. Sorry that these photographs are all mixed up, but that's what they are. Well, you remember me telling you about Mr. Gould and the football team and the committee? Well, that's where it, that's where it all started. There, that was the committee that started uh, all the football stuff. Now, when I was, um, when I was, when my me, me mother and father passed away, I started my own scrapyard, as you know, in the, uh, in the garden. Well, that's the picture there, look, of me and me boy. That's what I was like there when I was a young man. So you can see there, we're our workers. Now, here's my poor old mother. That's the bungalow that my father built in the middle of the scrapyard. And uh, she went very well there, dear. But that's the bungalow he built. And uh, that's the one they tried to build the wall in front of it. That's me poor old mother going in the door there. So you can see what I'm saying is right. Um, sorry, as I said, that this is all way really piggity. But here you go, look. There's another photograph there now of me as a young boy at Ellerbank. Uh, my father had all the horse boxes there. Over J types, and that was the first scrapyard that we had. So uh, that just gives you an indication there of um, how it was. And uh, I told you about um, restoring old vehicles. That's an old truck there that I restored. I bought he absolutely rotted out. That's a picture of me and me boy there. We built that one. Now, here's a picture of this, the scrapyard that I had took off me. There's the yard there. And uh, that's he up there again. That's my uncle Larry there, my father's brother. He was the one who had a he had a dunk in the mouth off the mush when he banged the drum. He was a character of mine. 
So here's a picture now of me when I was 14 as a Welsh cob bear, as a other bank. Now there was a famous wall that everybody said they didn't know nothing about when my mother and father died. And there he is, look. And there's my boy in the background. And that's the garage that was built. And that's me walking across. That's the wall they built right in front of my bungalow. As I said, I'm sorry that these photographs are all over the place. But I wish I could do it some other way, but I can't. So that's the wall they built to shut me down. And uh, I got another picture here of my Aunt Nancy and Uncle Tom. I told you that she... No, that's my granddad. That's two brothers there. But Aunt Nancy. I told you she wasn't very big. And there she is. And that's the one that that uh, Uncle Tom to the right didn't want my father to marry my mother. And once it was all sorted out, Aunt Nancy used to try to give my mother bits and pieces and try to give my mother some shoes. My mother took them out of the bag and said, what can I do with that? I told you about that story. So there you go. This one here is of me boy. Um, when we had uh, when we had the scrapyard down the bottom. That's a picture of me lorry there. So I want to move on a bit now. And I want to show you some photographs. Oh no. I got one here of the old Bluebird trailer. That, uh, no, that's a, that one there in the Bluebird. That one there is a static that was outside the, the, the bungalow. Um, I wanted to show you a picture now of um, my Uncle Tom's horse, the one I told you about he imported from America. That was the acne he had. That horse was called Jojo. And uh, he won everything. And they poisoned him because they couldn't beat him. So that was Jojo. Moving on now. Oh no, another one of the year now of... Uh, Uncle Tom and Aunt Nancy. Let's see too. So, uh, going back now to living at Other Bank where I was born. There's me and my mum in the yard because my father used to collect my carts. Here's a picture now of me mum and Aunt Vera. Now Aunt Vera was a lady that looked after us when we went to London for the second time for me mum's op art operation. There she is at a show one day. And uh, that's that one. I got one here now of me. You remember me telling you about the green hat? Well, that's me there, look, when I was four year old. And uh, we weren't living in the hut then. We was in my mum's trailer. Now, I was telling you about a bluebird trailer just now. Old bluebird. And there he is. We stayed in E for a while. That's what we had back in the days. Another picture now of my grandfather. I told you about the shandy, and there he is again, the shandy. That's my grandfather older and a guy. And that's the shed I went through with the tractor. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of photographs there. I know it's higgledy-piggledy, but that's, a, that's about the best I can do um, to show you. So moving on now, when we went up to the top yard, and I told you about uh, the uh, parties we used to have. So that was that was the bar. That's some of the barbecues we had. And I told you that that place was full of scrap. And there's the chimney for the furnace shed. 
There's the office. The scrap used to come right down past the bungalow. So, um, you can see that. That's another barbecue one there. The parties we had. Um, there's a picture there of me granny and granddad. This is all on the, the Ware side of the family at the moment. So that's Clarence Ware there and his wife Annie. That's my father's mother. Here's a picture of me, me and my father at his brother's wedding, Uncle Harry's wedding. That's me and my dad. Um, it's that you've seen the pictures because you, uh, you know, it's right for people to say, but uh, you can't beat a good picture to tell you the story, like. And um, I got another good picture here now of me and my dad at Harry's wedding. <coughs> That's me and my mum there and my dad. I was 15 there. That wasn't too bad of old picture. There's another picture of the barbecues at the scrapyard there, look. We used to have 30 or 40 people turn up. There's a skip lorry's at the front. And um, there's a picture of my old mate, uh, Andrew Simons there, look. He got a few stories to tell with my Aunt Liza. And uh, I told you about how they used to dress up as chefs and all the rest of it. There you go, look. That's Andrew and Uncle Artie. They was the chefs. We used to have pig roast and hog roast, all sorts then, at that time. So, those are the photographs. There's another one there of me and Uncle Artie. And uh, my boy Brian. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good times. So, all the stories I've told you have been completely true ones. And I've got a lot more photographs to show you, especially of the fairground scenes that uh, the family was involved with. So, what I was getting at by showing you all of this, and um, it's only now that I've been able to release the pressure that I've been under for years because now at least I've told the story because there's a lot of people especially in the village that thought that I just wandered off so if you can understand my anguish my hurt and the upset because no disrespect to the boys that got it now as they're Tommy's boys. But I can tell you this much. Right now. And I have got a, a fair sized place here. I bet this whole place. Take away everything they got. Give them 500 quid a piece. To go and knock on the door. And get their living. They couldn't do it. No way. That's what I'm angry about. Because it should have been from generation to generation. And they missed me out. So. The success that I got now. Is. I'm very grateful for. Because I'm sure that the good Lord. Has guided me through. But. When you see the whole picture. Of where I was brought up and reared from imagine having that took away from you Not it's not like selling it and wanting to leave imagine having it took away from you within two days of your father dying his business partner says I don't want any partners 
And my dad's mother says your mother didn't want to live here anyway. Imagine all of that. And that's where I was reared. That's where I was reared. And you go on and on. I think it's one of those things where really it's a mistake in life to expect anything. And I've learned over the years not to expect anything. Because nothing's granted to you. I do know this much. That had it been the other way around, my father would have looked after his brother's two boys. One million percent. He would rather give it to him than take it away from him. So, what started this whole thing off about me telling stories um, about what happened to me, it's never been a story of sympathy or trying to gain sympathy. It's been about stay, stating facts. Matter of facts and situations and things that happen. I finally got it off my chest now. But there's a lot of stories that I'd like to tell you. Um, even more. If people like to listen. If I get the interest, I will continue. But it's come from all those beginning photographs. And I haven't touched my mother's side yet. There's a lot of photographs that I need to put up about my mum's. I'm hoping one day that I can get somebody to show me how to make a proper video of these photographs because I have them all on digital copies of them but I can't upload them for some reason so I'm sorry about all that but uh, I hope now some of you people will look at the photographs and you can make your own mind up about what I've told you so I want to say it's bye bye for now from the Romany Rye Thank you very much. And I hope you like the video. I'm sorry that it's... The photographs are a bit wonky. But that's the best I can do. Bye-bye and God bless.